What's up, family? Man, I want to have a real heart to heart conversation with you guys today. Whew. <laughs> Years ago, I, you know, I was married to Celia, a um, young lady who passed away. Man, we would have our little battles. You know what I mean? Stay with me going somewhere. It's going to pro- be profound. And what I mean, battles is in the aspect that um, <laughs> I was already on my growth and development journey and man I'm reading a whole bunch of different stuff and studying a bunch of stuff at the time and I want her to read this book um, the master key system and um, if you haven't read that book man you get a copy of the book I think you can download it free a PDF file on the internet but get a copy of the book master key system and so I read this book and I was like, wow, this is crazy. This, you know, it's, man, this is a trip. And so I'm like trying to get her to read it. She didn't want to read it. And I was kind of taken back by that and kind of like, you know, just frustrated and just like, man, God, you, you gave me this beautiful woman to help. And man, um, you know, and we would go back and forth in regards to um, me sharing knowledge and some of the things I've learned along the way. and. If I told her something, man, it wasn't nothing. You know what I mean? Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. If I share some knowledge and some wisdom with her, she wouldn't receive it. She didn't receive it. But if somebody else, particularly a Caucasian older guy, if an older white guy had told her something, she took it as the gospel. And that used to just like infuriate me, just piss me the fuck off, you know, that I would share some stuff with her and she wouldn't receive it. She wouldn't believe it or anything, you know what I mean? But then she'll get on YouTube or um, somewhere else and she'll see somebody saying the exact same thing and she'll take it and run with it. And it was like, man, that was like the best thing since sliced bread to her. You know what I mean? And I'm like, God, what the fuck? You're like, God, why is she like this? And did it, did it. And I'm just mad at God, mad at her, but I'm mad at God. Like, God, you made her like this. What the fuck is wrong with her? You stay with me. I'm going somewhere. And so God is talking to me one day. And um, it was like, just relax. But I couldn't relax, you know, and I'm just like getting pissed. Cause it's like we would go through this all the time, and then one day she had, um, we found out that she had cancer, and um, it was spreading throughout her body, and she wasn't gonna make it. And so, in her study and in her just doing a bunch of research and stuff, she came across um, the Emerald Tablet, another book that I had tried to get her to read. And then she came across the master key system. And she fell in love with the master key system. And she bought like several copies. And she was going to give them to her sons and to other people. And I'm looking at her and I got my head down, just shaking my head. Because like, this is the book that I was trying to get you to read four or five years ago. And we got into an argument about it. And she's like, no, it's not. You had some black book. It's a black notebook and da da da. And it was like, oh my gosh. So I went and got the book. Then because I had a PDF file of it. So I went and got the PDF file of it in my notebook, black notebook. Like she, that's what she remembered. And so I bring it to her. Open it up. Master key system. And it's all highlighted, right? When I read books, I highlight, underline, and write notes and stuff. And she'll She's like, you always want to be right. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. And so now I'm pissed. You know what I mean? I'm pissed. And so I'm outside and I'm talking to God. I'm like, God, what the fuck? How come she just can't acknowledge when she's wrong? How come she has to be fucking right? All the fucking time. And she can never fucking apologize. God, did it. I'm just going in. And I can hear God say crystal clear. Do you want to be right? 
or do you want her to grow? What's more important to you? And I'm like, what are you talking about? I am right. He said, Elijah, what's more important to you? You being right or her growth and development? Think about it. What's more important? You planted the seed. He wasn't receptive to this, to getting the seed or receiving the knowledge and wisdom and information at that time. Now she's ready to receive that information. Who gives a fuck, Elijah? Who gives her that information? Who gives a fuck, Elijah? Who gave her that information first? Yes, Elijah, you try to get her to read that book four or five years ago. Who fucking cares? This is God talking to me. Who fucking cares? She's reading it now. She's receptive to it now. She's sharing it now. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, God. I get you. If I truly love this woman, then what should matter is that she got the information. It, it pains me that, man, she can't receive it from me. God, what is it between her and I got to where she can't receive this information from me? What is it got to where she can't hear the knowledge and wisdom that you've given me, you shared with me, and that I'm now trying to pass on to her? What's that bridge? What's that, that barrier that's stopping her? He said, Elijah. Who fucking cares? That's none of your fucking business. I said, God, I'm just trying to share the knowledge and wisdom that, I, that I've gained. And I'm just trying to help her and everybody else. But if they can't receive it, then maybe it's something I'm doing wrong. He said, maybe it's not their fucking time. Elijah, why do you want to be right? Why do you feel the need to be right? Elijah, why do you need the affirmations from her? Why do you need the acknowledgement that you put her up on this book or you tried to put her up on this book four or five years ago? Why is that so fucking important to you, Elijah? I'm making this video because I want us to understand that as you're sharing information to people, as you're giving people the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding that you got, or you, you're sharing that with them, or you're imparting that into them, speaking that into their life, they may not receive it at that time. The odds are a lot of people aren't going to receive what you have to say. They're not going to receive, be receptive to it. They're going to look at it as it's bullshit. You're not a man of God. You're not a woman of God. Because God don't deal with crystals. God don't deal with tattoos. And God don't cuss. And God, and they have all this fucking bullshit going on within them as to why they can't receive what you have to say. Ain't got shit to do with you. It's them. All this other stuff is an excuse for them not to receive it, to dismiss it, to minimize it. Don't get caught up on the hoopla. Don't get caught up on the drama. Don't get caught up on the bullshit. Your job is just to impart the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding that you've got. Your job is just to be that beacon. Your job is not to change people. It's just to share that light, share your love. Everybody, and, and the hard, one of the hardest lessons for me to understand, for me, and I'm still struggling with this, everybody's not receptive to love. Everybody's not receptive to pure love. Everybody don't know what love really is. And so as you let your love shine through you and you manifest love and you speak love and you're this beacon of love, understand that a lot of people ain't going to be receptive to it. Because 
they don't know what love is. Because they've had everything but love. And so they don't know how to receive it. And a lot of them don't even feel like they're really worthy of it. And that some people are scared of it. But you keep loving. You're going to get hurt. It is what it is. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get offended because people are going to say things and people are going to treat you a certain way and they're going to just do what they fucking do. They're doing it out of their own pain and trauma. They're doing it out of their own ignorance. They're hurt. They're twisted. And they don't understand how twisted they are. And so they're going to say things, they're going to do things out of that pain, out of that trauma, out of that ignorance. And it's going to hurt you. It's going to bother you. It's going to cut you deep. And it is what it is. That's the cross we have to bear. There is no getting around that. There is no protecting yourself. from that. You can't protect yourself from the world and be a beacon to the world. You can't protect yourself from the trauma and the pains of humanity and be a beacon of hope, a beacon of love, a beacon of light for humanity. See, we all want to be this beacon of hope and light, da, 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 da. but what the flip side of being that beacon is the pain. The flip side of that beacon is being rejected. The flip side of that beacon is being dogged the fuck out. That goes with the territory. That goes with the job. You want to be a beacon of hope, of love, of inspiration? Understand you're going to bleed. Understand you're going to have people walk out of your life. You're going to have people betray your trust. You're going to have people turn their back on you. You're going to have people misunderstand you, mistreat you. You're going to have caught hell. You're going to catch hell. And there is no getting around that. There is no sidestepping that. In order for you to be this beacon of hope and love and inspiration and light, you got to go through the fucking pain. You got to go through the rejections and all the other hatred and other bullshit. Understand. They're not rejecting you, per se. Your light is showing up how dirty they are. Your knowledge, your wisdom, your love is showing them how twisted they are. They've been running around in the dark with like-minded people. And so they thought they were woke. They thought they were enlightened. They thought they had Christ conscious, Buddha conscious, God conscious. They thought they were saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost sealed, water baptized, running for the Lord and all this other bullshit. And then here you come. And your life radiates God. Your life is a reflection of God. Your life is a reflection of love. Of healing. And they don't know how to deal with that. They don't know how to handle that. So it's intimidating to them. It's threatening to them. And it's only intimidating and threatening because it's intimidating and threatening their comfort zone. It's intimidating and threatening their ignorance. And so now they have decisions to make. Now they're in a struggle. Part of them, comfortable in the bullshit. But then another part of them sees you, the real you. They recognize the real you. And now they're twisted. Now they're in an emotional battle. Over your light. 
over your love. And it is what it is. Your job is just to shine a light. Some people are going to run from it. They don't want the light at all. They'd rather be in darkness for whatever reason. Some people don't want love. They want to keep getting abused. They want to keep getting mistreated and dogged out. Because they're comfortable there. That's what they know. That's what makes them feel valued. Is to have somebody slap the shit out of them. Is to have somebody cuss them out. And disrespect them. It is what it is. You can't save anyone. You're not here to save anyone. You're here to shine your light. You're here to be a beacon of love. And it is in the process of shining your light. It is in the process of being that beacon of hope, that beacon of love, that you reflect God to them. They see God in you. They hear God in you. You ain't got to quote no fucking scriptures to them. You ain't got to tell them about heaven or hell or none of this other bullshit. Just live your life. Live your life. Your life is the greatest sermon they'll ever see. Your life is the greatest sermon they'll ever hear. By living your life. By being a beacon of hope, of love, inspiration, of light that you came here to be. This is how we help humanity. This is how we change the world. This is how we continue to heal and help others heal. This is how we show others and empower others to take control over their life. To take control over their growth and development. This is how we show others how to take control over their mind. And their ego. We have to grow up. We have to grow up. And we have to understand. That with again. With being this beacon. Comes pain. Comes rejection. Comes hatred. Comes jealousy. There's going to be a lot of people jealous of you. There's going to be a lot of people hating you. Don't dim your light. Speaking their affirmation. Don't dim your light. Speaking their acceptance. Speaking their love. We have to grow up. I hope and pray that I said something to encourage you, to inspire you, to lift you up, to challenge your way of thinking. Namaste. To God in me, who recognizes, acknowledges, and cherishes the God in each and every one of you. You have God in you. You have God in you. Every single one of you. I don't give a fuck about your ethnicity, your gender. None of that shit. Your political affiliations. I don't give a fuck about any of that shit. You have God in you. Happy healing. Peace.